while we were slaves to sin, while we were enslaved by sin, while in our condition it was humanly impossible to free ourselves from this enslavement, notice what God did. The offended God himself, in infinite compassion, broke the silence and came forth to bless his enemies. We were slaves to sin. We were enslaved by our sin. We were condemned by the law. And we richly deserve the just penalty for breaking the law, the curse of the law, the wrath of God. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son. God has graciously intervened to address our sinful condition and plight and provided for us the Savior that we so desperately need. Now, redeeming us from our slavery to sin and the penalty of sin would have been sufficiently astounding. If there was a period, we have more than sufficient reason to seriously celebrate the amazing grace of God. But the sentence doesn't stop there. God sent forth His Son to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. Individuals tend to think of God as merely tolerating them, often frustrated with them, eager to punish them. And perhaps you are one of them. In adoption, God takes us into His family and fellowship. He establishes us as His children and heirs. Closeness, affection, and generosity are at the heart of the relationship. Do you perceive God as full of affection for you? desiring to be close with you, full of generosity toward you. Do you? If not, perhaps you are more aware of your sin than you are the adopting grace of God. What a great thing it is to be forgiven of sin. What a great thing it is to be freed from fear of future wrath. What a great thing it is to be right with God the Judge. But to be loved and cared for by God the Father is great. That's what the Father did. Sets forth His Son. Crushes His Son. In order to redeem sinners like you not just redeem you, 